Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and look who's still around and I know I said the last year but we're gonna keep it going this year. Sup? Um, in this video I'll be showing you guys how I made a chibi-fied baby koala and make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video where you can learn how you could possibly win this koala as well as help out all the actual real koalas in Australia through the charity raffle. So I'm not doing a art doll how I normally would make it. This is more a plush style kind of art doll. So it's not really posable and it's more meant to sit and display on like a shelf or something. But um, it's also very beginner friendly. So I'm going to show you guys how I make these. The steps to make these are generally the same. Um, we're going to start with sculpting the head and feet as always. Um, I'm going for more of a chibi fied cutesy style but you can still kind of know what the animal is so i'm still using references as i always say references people but i'm not following them quite as closely because i still want it to be quite stylized and you'll notice the um clear eyes that i'm using is glass cabochons that i bought from an etsy seller they're just clear and i usually paint over them but if you wanted you could also paint the back of them which is really hard for me so i don't really try to do it that way because i don't have a, a steady hand for painting so tiny but if you wanted to you can paint the back of them and they'll give you like this kind of following effect and it's really cool. And can we also just talk about how I swear through half this video this koala thing just looks like a weird version of Squidward because all I can see is a giant nose. <laughs> is it anybody else or is it just me? To help me with sculpting you'll also notice that I'm using sculpting tools. Now, I'll be the first to say you definitely do not need these to sculpt anything. For years and years, I just use my fingers and a needle. So it's definitely not a requirement to get started in art, so don't think that you have to. But it does make things easier. So I say if you have the extra coin, why not get a, just a couple? I know they sell them at pretty much any craft store and they just make things a lot easier especially when it's hard to reach like little nooks and crannies and you want to smooth something out it just it makes it a lot easier to use the tools for that but you know again don't feel like you need them because you don't but they help i'm a changed believer i used to think they suck but they're great can you guys tell I'm tired and just woke up and I'm just now doing this voiceover because I forgot to do it yesterday? Can you tell yet? Hmm? Can you?
To make the fur, it's a very simple but very time consuming process where you're just making little dashes over and over and over again on the clay surface. And you wanna pay attention to, it helps look at pictures to know the fur direction of whatever animal you're making, just to make sure that it looks a little bit more realistic than if it was all just going in one direction. It really helps to vary it a little bit, you know, have something squiggle the wrong way, something like, you know, a real fur would. You'd have those strands of hairs and stuff. So it helps to really look at the pictures, to know the fur direction, and to just vary it a little bit when you're um, sculpting it. And just be patient because this takes forever. You can kind of like zone out and stuff so that is nice so if you like just put on some music and stuff and just go ham like it's not too bad but it is a long process so here's something you don't normally see me doing instead of sculpting feet i'm sculpting limbs so i'm sculpting the arm here where i just want it to be this chunky little elbow and arm <laughs> because I'm going to be attaching it to a body later, but um, it's just, it, it looks strange until you start putting fur on it and putting the little toes. It just looks like a weird, I tried to make an L, but it didn't quite work, <laughs> but that's basically what it is. And you'll notice throughout this entire video, I keep um, checking my patterns. I keep checking the limbs against the head just to make sure that everything is kind of proportioned to each other and nothing's too big or too small and it's shaping out how I want. So for these guys, I actually make patterns for them and you'll see like this one was actually for an owl, but um, the body shapes are usually similar. So I'll just reuse them depending on whatever animal I'm sculpting, but I'll just place the pattern down and trace over it onto my faux fur and then cut out the two pieces and sew them together. So it's a lot more simpler than, you know, cutting the length of the entire art doll and cutting seams for where the legs are gonna go and sew all the way down the middle then you sew the legs and so it's a lot more simple where you just trace these two patterns sew them together you did it <laughs> so, it's a lot easier and I'm, you know i really gotta start making more of these because they are simple and they are fun to where you just want something uh, uh, yeah like a bit simpler to make so good for that this fur in particular i I don't know how else to explain it besides it's like slippery. It's like, I wouldn't put this through a sewing machine because it just moves so much and it's hard to sew. So I used a heckin' lot of pins just to get this thing to stay still while I sewed it. So that's why you see me going a bit slow because I'm just trying to make sure everything's staying lined up. And so sometimes you get furs that are like that where it looks really nice so you want to use it, but it's so hard to sew. So pins really help with that kind of situation.
Once I sew pretty much all the way around, I do leave a little bit of a gap just so I can flip it inside out and then stuff it. And the stuffing for this is just teddy bear stuffing. It's called polyfill and you can get it from pretty much anywhere. Like I always say, even Walmart sells it and any craft store will have it. And I made sure because I want this guy to be kind of chub chub, um, I stuff it like really firm and make sure that there's no little gaps or spaces because I want him to be nice and firm and fluffy. After the body is finished, it's time to do all the painting for the clay pieces. I'm just... <laughs> I'm getting flashbacks <laughs> of that stupid white. Uh, I found new white. Apparently, I got zinc white golden paint, which is just the devil incarnate. We don't use that. We don't talk about it. It's now going to be he who shall not be named. <laughs> but yes, I got a new white where it's from Liquitex and it's heavy body. Apparently just don't get that zinc white. But anyways, I am using black and white to mix a gray color and I'm just slowly kind of dry brushing it onto the sculpture. And what that means is just I'm not taking as much paint and just lightly dragging it across the sculpture. So I want the fur details to really um, show through and be picked up um, easily by the eye so you start with a base coat and then you eventually just go lighter and lighter where you're mostly just hitting highlights where you think like light would reflect against the sculpture so I did it like the forehead around the cheeks the chin um, the nose even the very top of the ears things like that just to really brighten up and um, be a little bit more eye-catching
And of course, we need to make his white body gray as well. And for that, I'm using an airbrush. And I use a Gravity Feed dual action airbrush, which is kind of a mouthful, but it just means that you put paint on the top of the airbrush and the dual action allows you con to control how much paint is coming out. And I'm just spraying gray all over the body except for the tummy because their tummy is white. And the only thing after that is to attach all the sculpted pieces to the body. And I just make sure to cut um, the fur away where I'm going to glue a limb just so that I want to know where I'm gluing it. And it attaches a little bit better when it's not just glued to all the fur. And after all that, the koala is finished. I did last minute add a little leaf on top of its head because I just thought that that was so freaking adorable. But yes, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you could win the koala through a charity raffle. The charity we will be donating to is the World Wildlife Fund that specifically made a section for just the Australian wildlife. Because if you guys don't know, the fires that have been going on there have just been completely devastating to all the environment and wildlife there. And honestly, billions of animals have probably lost their life and their homes by now. So they need all the help that we can get. So what I'm setting up for is if you donate $1, you're automatically entered into the raffle to win this um, little guy. Of course, if you want to donate more, the amount of money you donate results in how many tickets are entered in for your name. So the more money you donate, the higher the chances you have to win this little guy. Um, it'll be going on until January 31st, around, I think, 2 p.m. You can check my social medias for exact details, but I'll be leaving all the information in the description down below. So please, guys... If you have the extra cash or if you can simply share this video or the post I post to get the word out there that we're trying to make money for the Australian wildlife, it would really help out. But with all that said, thank you guys for sticking around for the whole video and listening to all the stuff about what this charity is about. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time, which will totally be soon because I'm doing good. <laughs> keep uploading. Yes. Okay, bye.